there's always a gap in the beginning of my Facebook videos. I haven't figured out that gap yet. And it's really disorienting every time I start up a video because it says going live, three, two, one, 20 minutes in, zero seconds in, now start. And I'm going, so every time I start a Facebook video, it like cuts off the first few seconds. And I'm like, do you have problems with math, Facebook? Okay, this is on it, imagination. And this, this I'm excited about. So I have a few modes. I have my teaching mode and then I have my research mode. Oh, I love my research mode. And after my research mode, I'll hit an epiphany and I'll be like, oh my God, I got to share this with people and your people. So I got to share this. I located the short code in sales. This is what makes dirty sales so dirty. This is it right here. So there is basically an order of operations that's supposed to occur in networking. And when you break down the actual order of operations, what you are really doing is going through the vetting and validation of a person's credibility before you even discuss sales. So it's literally the credibility stage. I'm gonna call it this. We're gonna call it the credibility stage. Now the credibility stage used to be practiced thousands of years ago. In fact, we have stories about this. Once upon a time, there was a king and a queen and war was at hand. So to ensure peace stayed within the land, the king approached the queen for negotiations. But to ensure that he understood or communicated his intentions, he brought to her a peace offering. We all know about the peace offering. That's why men bring flowers and candy to women on a date. It's a peace offering. So he brings the peace offering to the queen and with it, he kneels before her in genuflect to show respect because he's looking for equal footing by sacrificing his own vulnerability to her to show her that he means no harm. And he says to her, I come in peace and friendship for the safety and security of our kingdoms so that we might unite in friendship and trade and commerce. The queen, seeing his invitation, decides to accept the gift and thus they meet on equal footing. Negotiations begin and a contract of peace is formed. They break bread together, which is an old custom in all cultures to communicate that you are safe enough to eat with and drink with. The only time this really was the exception was the Trojan War when they had the Trojan horse that violated the peace offering concept. But that's exactly how they did it was they knew that the peace offering concept could be corrupted if you crammed a bunch of men into the Trojan horse and then attacked them after they had the whining and the drinking. Anyway. After the peace contract is formed, what they walked away with was trade and commerce. Now, let's take this into a smaller setting between a patron and a business. You are supposed to give them a free gift to show them free gift. Do you know why we call it a free gift? It's because abusers have taken the word gift and actually turned it into a bait and switch so that when you are given a gift, they say, okay, now you owe me. That's called indentured servitude, which is a really cleaned up way of saying you're my slave now without consent, which is slavery. So now we attach the word free gift to validate this has absolutely no hidden agenda in it. However, the abusers have caught on to that and now they emphasize free gift while they turn around it's, it's really dirty. So after you provide the gift to the patron, you're supposed to engage in a s negotiation. It's, it's a very simple friendship piece to be made and it's to secure that relationship. Conversation then is supposed to go through. The conversation that occurs is what are your needs? I'd love to learn more about you. How can I help you? How can you help me? What do we have in common? And a conversation would unfold to see how both parties matched, if they were a good match, and if they saw eye to eye. If all of this was the case, then a network, a connection, or a circuit was then formed. After that occurs, and it's all done on equal footing, after all that occurs, it ends with thank you with an invitation to come again. The resources that they have available are then offered again as a second peace offering to say whatever I have available is yours. And it was 100% a gifting to show proof of concept and intent. 
when this was done, credibility and proof of concept was established. No degree was necessary. No credentials were required. No Google reviews were needed. These are all manipulative tactics that can be used to manipulate to fluff a person's flout. One of the individuals that I work with, wonderful, wonderful person, she and I had a conversation yesterday and I spoke to a few other people and we were discussing one very specific person in the business who comes off as a really warm, genuine person. But when we started to unpack our stories and we started to compare information, we found out that she had used literally Google reviews, her own success story, and world-class, I'm a CBS approved, I've been on CNN, I'm a celebrity, and all of this was true, but her classes actually taught nothing. It was her standing on a pedestal talking about how great she was. The students in her class were the same people over and over again who kept purchasing her program over and over again because she sold very well, and that is all she did. She actually couldn't deliver on anything to the point where her students had to keep coming back over and over again for more material because she actually never taught them anything. She was just that good at selling and that's all she was. But she had all the criteria. criteria. She had the degree, she had the success, she had the Google reviews, she had the celebrity. She had the CNN reviews and the publicity and the PR that all flouted her up about what a great professional she was and I've attended her classes all of the people I've interviewed with for, about her all attended her classes and every one of them said the same thing. I didn't learn anything from her. She just talked about how great she was. All of that stuff can be faked. Be aware of it. The only way you truly know if somebody is genuine is if you spend time with them in this four key step, peace offering, friendship exchange, equal footing, and the invitation to return. After a one to two hour conversation, you can determine if a person is valid or invalid and that's all the proof of concept you need. It absolutely invalidates any need for credentials, proof of concept, doesn't need it. What you need to know is only, does this person have something I can learn from? Does this person have a lesson that can improve my life? And that's it, it's very simple. We have, com we have not complicated it. We have been taught to complicate it by abusers with all of their red tape so they have the advantage. It's a manipulation tactic. So after I figured all of this out and I located the flow chart, the literally the order of operations of establishing a, a human connection, what I realized was the shortcut. Abusers have found the cheat code that allows them to bypass the credibility stage. As a result, they can plug in that cheat code do literally steps 1B or ABC, which bypasses all of that. And as a result, it will trigger the same response without any of the credibility. And that's how they scam you. That's how they abuse you. They use the cheat code. The cheat code bypasses the entire process. But the process is the proof of concept and their credibility. The reason why they've bypassed it with this cheat code is because they don't have any credibility because they don't have proof of concept. What they're doing is triggering a very ancient ritual of networking and human connection and leveraging that to their advantage so you can't figure out that they're cheats. Hence, cheat code. And then they teach this to others. The teaching of sales is the cheat code, people. That's it. The dirty sales is the cheat code that they cracked to pass down in their educational system. So now everybody's just doing the cheat code, which is why we're all being scammed, which is why we're all going to the same instructors over and over again who actually aren't teaching us anything. You don't want the cheat code. You want the actual credibility process. If you skip the credibility process, you'll be able to filter, filter out the cheaters, the liars, the abusers from the genuine and real deal. And when you do that, you don't need a license. You don't need anything. You just need your personality and your character and your brain. And your brain is supposed to present your worth and your asset. Value and worth in business, in psychology, and in the world 
is extraordinarily powerful. This is easily one of the most amazing things in the world. Your value and worth is only determined by the people who need it. There is nothing else. There's no degrees required. There is absolutely no prerequisites, nothing. Your mind is only as valuable to the people who need it. So you have to talk to people and go through the credibility process to see, to give them a chance to evaluate you and your asset to see if it has worth to them. It is bare naked, equal footing vulnerability where you are just stripping yourself all down and saying, this is who I am. Narcissists will never do this. And this is how you know a cheater, a liar, a scammer from the real deal. Cherish the credibility process. Don't shortcut this. You cheat this, you shortcut this, and you've lost all, it, it, it's purely manipulation. If you are presented by a business owner who does not go through the credibility process with you, they're either naive about the importance of the process or they just learned the cheat code and they're using it to bypass the actual credibility process because they're not credible. All of that stuff can be faked. We know that people all the time pay others to pass them on exams. We know all the time that people with great degrees can fake that by paying and doing blackmail and cheating the system to cover up the fact that they've cheated on a massive test. We know that this is done in our society. All of this stuff can be faked. The only way to determine someone's credibility with true authority is sitting down and going through that credibility process. It takes about one hour per person and you're supposed to strip yourself mentally naked and show them the real deal of what you have and who you are. And only they, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, value and worth is also in the eye of the beholder. And they have to judge you and evaluate your worth to them. But if you don't let them do that, how do they know if they need you or have any value for you? Suddenly you have a connection that's not genuine. Do not skip the credibility process. Thank you so much. And may the kindest of words always find you.